Mission Illustrated is one artist's attempt to show you the fantastic visions vividly described in the book of Revelation. Through this presentation, it is hoped that you will share in the exciting realization that we have an awesome and powerful God who is in control of all things. Revelation Illustrated was done to glorify the Lord as His Word is seen as well as heard. The year was around 96 AD and Domitian was the emperor of the Roman Empire. He demanded that all the people worship him as God. Failure to do so meant persecution of various degrees. The Christians, of course, refused and were suffering and dying for it. John the Apostle had been banished to the Isle of Patmos a small, desolate island in the Aegean Sea. While in exile, John received this message of wonderful promise for all of God's people from the first century until the end of time. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash around his chest. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes, his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write therefore what you have seen, what is now and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Chapters 2 and 3 contain the messages that Jesus had for each of the seven churches in the province of Asia. They are messages of truth and guidance that can be applied to congregations of today. Each ends with the command, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit. And there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian. A rainbow resembling an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones. And seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also, before the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center, around the throne, 
were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under his wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. It had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, and they sang a new song, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sang, Every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them singing. as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come, 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 come. I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. When 
the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come, come. I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a day's wages, and three quarts of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil or the wine. of the fourth living creature say, come, 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 come. I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. and brothers who were to be killed as they had been was completed. I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. And the whole moon turned blood red. And the stars in the sky fell to the earth as those figs dropped from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The sky receded like a scroll, rolling up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. opening of the seventh seal will bring even worse disasters upon the earth. But first, the servants of God are given a special mark that distinguishes them as God's very own. 144,000 people from all the tribes of Israel and also a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. 
And then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. As each of the seven angels sounds his trumpet, more judgments are passed upon the earth and its inhabitants. They are horribly destructive to land, sea, and all living creatures. But those people with that special mark, the seal of God, are spared. The rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still refuse to repent and turn to God. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun, and his legs were like fiery pillars. He was holding a little scroll which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and he gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven say, Seal up what the seven thunders have said, and do not write it down. Then the angel I had seen, standing on the sea and on the land, raised his right hand to heaven. There will be no more delay, but in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished, just as he announced to his servants, the prophets. Then the voice that I had heard from heaven spoke to me once more. Go take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. And the angel said to me, take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey. I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. Then I was told, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, go and measure the temple of God in the altar and count the worshipers there, but exclude the outer court. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. These men have the power to shut up the sky so that it will not rain during the time that they are prophesying. And they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. When the two witnesses have finished their testimony, the beast from the abyss will attack and kill them. But after three and a half days, God will raise them and take them up to heaven while their enemies look on. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a great hailstorm. A great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven. An enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his heads. 
His tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child at the moment it was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child who will rule all nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God in his throne. The woman fled into the desert to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But the dragon was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the desert where she would be taken care of out of the serpent's reach. Then from his mouth, the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away in the torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring, those who obey God's commandment and hold to the testimony of Jesus. And the dragon stood on the shore of the sea And I saw a beast coming out of the sea. He had ten horns and seven heads with ten crowns on his horns. And on each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard. But he had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was astonished and followed the beast. Men worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast. And they also worshipped the beast and asked, Who is like the beast? Who can make war against him? Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. He exercised all the authority of the first beast on his behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And he performed great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of men. Because of the sign he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast, he deceived the inhabitants of the earth. He ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. He was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast. For it is man's number.
His number is six, six, six. I saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire. And standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and his image and over the number of his name. They held hearts given them by God and sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. After this I looked, and in heaven the temple that is, the tabernacle of testimony was opened. Out of the temple came the seven angels with the seven plagues. They were dressed in clean, shining linen and wore golden sashes around their chests. Then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls filled with the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with the smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go, pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. The bowl judgments are the last and the worst of them all. And they are inflicted upon those who have the mark of the beast and worship his image. They curse the name of God and refuse to repent and glorify him who is in control of all these judgments. As the last angel pours out his bowl, a voice from the throne announces, It is done. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. This title was written on her forehead. Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. For her sins are piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she has given. Pay her back double for what she has done. Mix her a double portion from her own cup. Give her as much torture and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit as queen, I am not a widow, and I will never mourn. Therefore in one day her plagues will overtake her death, mourning, and famine, she will be consumed by fire, for mighty is the Lord God who judges her. Open, 
and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one but he himself knows. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. his thigh he has this name written king of kings and lord of lords And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss, and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil, or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. In number, they are like the sand on the seashore. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them, and the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever.
fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates and its wall. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 1,400 miles in length and as wide and high as it is long. The wall was made of jasper and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The street of the city was of pure gold, like transparent glass. not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. No longer will there be any curse. There will be no more night. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. I am making everything new. Behold, I am coming soon.
Pat, you do such fabulous work, and I, I'm sure that everybody else agrees with me that there's so many questions you want to ask someone who's as talented as yourself. And one of the first things I guess I wanted to know was about your background and uh, what type of work you do. Well, I was schooled in fine arts and later went into commercial art. And as I did, I also took the fine art training with me as it, it sort of shows in my work. Uh, so that was, uh, basically it was the fine art background, mm -hmm. I think, that was so helpful because you really need it when you go into commercial art. Some people don't realize that. So um, the, doing the um, commercial art work has been really fulfilling throughout the years and I've done work for many different companies and ad agencies and um, even illustrated a, a book or two and that sort of thing. So right. it's been very interesting. Well, sounds yeah. interesting. It's an interesting kind of job. Now, I, what I'm curious to know is how the idea developed to illustrate Revelations. Well, that was real interesting. It was uh, not a commercial illustration job or a commission of any kind. Well, I guess you might say maybe the Lord did. <laughs> but uh, no, I was asked to uh, teach a Sunday school class at our church. And uh, after beginning uh, to teach, I had taught maybe a few months, and the st students requested a study on the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one thing that I was always afraid to get into was the book of Revelation. I think a lot of people are. But uh, in so I prepared to study, you know, to teach the book of Revelation. I had really brought it before the Lord, and I felt as though I should really study this and, and bring it to my students. I uh, did a lot of praying about it. Yeah. So I went to prepare uh, my teaching and got all my materials together and started to read through the book of Revelation again. And as I was reading, I realized that the book of Revelation was given in, a, in the form of visions, visual teaching aids, if you yes. want to call it that, to the Apostle John. Right. Uh, and the Lord Jesus himself did that. So I felt as though the book needed to be illustrated, for, or at least I thought there were visual aids available that I could use uh, for my students to make it clear. Because I know I'm a very, very visually oriented person, and a lot of people are, and, and it helps so much to learn uh, if you can see something as well as, uh, as hear it. So I, I went looking for visual aids for teaching Revelation, something that really portrayed the beauty and drama of the, the visions I was reading in Revelation and I couldn't find anything and I was really surprised and I thought well maybe it was just my own uh, problem of, of finding them so I, I decided just to illustrate it myself and that's how it all began. Good for yeah. you. Speaking of being visually oriented, um, they say that people remember what they see much longer than what they hear and yeah. certainly what you do makes a tremendous impact, you know, just the work, you know, is so yeah. good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It was very, very good. I think that's true. Well, we are, we have two parts to our brain, the left and the right, and one side com is, takes in the things that we hear and see and read, and the other part takes in the visual and the creative part. And I think that uh, when you put both of them together, it really kind of completes the picture and helps Doesn't us to remember. It? Mm -hmm. it certainly does. Where do you do most of your work? Um, I, right out of my home, I have a studio right. in my home, and uh, it's uh, been great because raising two, I have twin boys who um, are, are, have all, I've always been there when they needed me and it was, it's a wonderful, if you can do that kind of work out of your home, you know, any kind of job out of your home, it's great. So I've always uh, worked from my studio in my home and that's also the base of our company, Revelation Productions. Oh, that's mm -hmm. great. It's wonderful to have the opportunity to work at home, right. I know. Mm -hmm. um, what type of medium do you use? Um, uh, various mediums, but my favorite is airbrush. And um, although I work in, in watercolor and um, pen and ink, pencil, whatever happens to work for the, you know, what I'm working on, but airbrush is my favorite. And uh, most of the artwork that is done in the series Revelation mm -hmm. Illustrated was done with airbrush. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, now I know that in Revelation Illustrated, you use the Pittsburgh Symphony rather than just use a track underneath. Why did you it decide to do exciting. that? Yes. Um, well, actually, I, I hadn't planned to use the Pittsburgh Symphony, but it was a, a real blessing to be able to do that. Uh, the studio that we did the, uh, the sound uh, soundtrack in, Audiomation in Pittsburgh, um, the symphony actually records there for other things. And so the manager, Greg Visa, said to me, if you want, we can use the symphony. We had uh, thought we could probably take it from library music that you can get for that particular purpose. But it would have um, been even 
about the same amount or more expensive to do it that way, to license this music. Is that right? Yes. Wow. So actually, we didn't use the whole Pittsburgh Symphony. We used, we used 20 pieces, and they tripled, they did it in triplicate. And it was a very interesting process when they, they actually did this. They videotaped the conductor the first time through. And then the next two times, the uh, symphony took their uh, their direction from the video, t the uh, large screen video on which he was oh, conducting. Great. It was something very innovative uh, that, that they did. So I, it was real interesting, you know, taping in the studio with the symphony and the choir. The Bach Choir of Pittsburgh did the singing and excellent job. And that was also done, done tr you know, three times on the tape. So it sounds like there were 30 voices, it sounds like 90. There were 20 mm -hmm. musicians, it sounds like 60. So it was, it was very interesting to, to do this. Well, you're very fortunate. I have some friends that work for the Pittsburgh Symph Symphony, and they're a very talented group of people, definitely. Sure. Um, <clears throat> now, tell me about the process of putting together this video now. Who did you work with, and uh, where did you work to do it? Well, um, we actually, um, uh, the, the a actual video was taped, all the artwork was done at the uh, Cornerstone Television Studios, and uh, the uh, people that we worked with were absolutely wonderful, and uh, they did a, a beautiful job of editing. Um, I just, it was beyond my expectations, what they did with the special effects and everything. They made my artwork look even better, <laughs> so I was real excited about it. But uh, yeah, editing uh, was, was, took quite a while because there was, there was just so much involved in it, but I think it's really worthwhile. The, the job they did was ex is excellent, and I'm so pleased. That's great. And, and how did you um, commission the job, I guess? Did you speak to someone in particular and they took it from there? Did you, hey, Kevin. The, with the, uh, did, how did you did you just bring the idea to somebody here at Cornerstone and? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, actually, I'd, I'd called Tom Green and asked him if he would um, be interested in handling this oh, job because I knew he was so, he was so talented in that yeah, area, and so I um, I asked you know commissioned Tom Tom Green Productions to do. Uh, the video portion of it. So uh, worked together with Tom Green and uh, Kevin Robinson and uh, Steve Johnson and Steve Kaner and good people. Good people. Well, you're yeah. in good hands, aren't right? you? <laughs> yeah. Now tell me just a little bit more about your business. I think that you offer T-shirts and other type of products. Right. Right. Yeah. Through the uh, actually. Uh, the class I was telling you about that I taught was in 1981, and from that period on, when we realized that this wasn't an isolated incident of not being able to find visual aids. We realized that many people needed needed these uh, for teaching, and so f from that, uh, from about 1982 on, we've been producing visual teaching aids and uh, you know, posters and slides and and now the, a video that can be used. T-shirts also for a witness wit witnessing tool, and uh, we send those out all over all 50 states and uh, about 15 countries now. So it's really that neat how the Lord can use something that you know a Sunday school class and That's develop right. it into something. He had great plans and I never knew it. But <laughs> Listen, I know I appreciate it and I thank God that he used you because you've done I some great too. work and it, I, I, I can't pull myself away sometimes even from this video. I just had a difficult time just turning my eyes from it. It was great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pat. And well, God bless you, you and your thank endeavors. You,